Since 1915, Deluxe has been in the business of helping small businesses and financial institutions be successful, and we are known as a check printer. We're the largest check printer in the U.S. We're based out of St. Paul, Minnesota. We're a $2 billion company, um, but we have been evolving alongside our customers over time. So while we used to help them with just the operate their side of the business, so business forms and checks, we've been evolving right alongside them and have acquired and built out services to now help small businesses with their marketing needs. So if you were to start a small business, we could help you with your branding, your logo, your website, email marketing, print your business cards, but no one knows us for that, right? They know us as a check printing company. So the business problem that we have to solve, or the, the task I took on about a year and a half ago when I joined the company was, how do you turn around the perceptions of a 100-year-old company? And how do you do that in the face of your actual 100th anniversary? So while a centennial is quite a milestone, usually companies spend a lot of time making videos about themselves or about their legacy, but I had to make sure I wasn't talking about our past, that we were talking about our future and where we were headed. I also had this brand perception issue where we have less than 1% brand awareness with small business owners. We work with 4.5 million small businesses, but there's 28 million of them in the US. So I like to say everywhere from here is up. Um, we also have a very small budget. We do not invest a lot in brand awareness. We invest a lot in direct response and demand gen, but not in pure brand awareness. Not to mention the fact that we are being dramatically outspent by our competitors. So you've probably seen a lot of our competitors out there, they're spending giant. So we've got Constant Contact, Vistaprint, GoDaddy. We are being exponentially outspent. And so this isn't a problem unique to our brand, um, but it meant that we needed to do something different. I like to say we needed to be scrappy. All of our competitors are really busy selling our customers stuff. They're selling products and services, and it's a very noisy marketplace. And very few small business owners got into business for themselves because they can't wait to figure out how to do their social media uh, marketing, or they can't wait to build their website, or they just really have their eye on a specific business card. Marketing feels like work to them. And so to just crowd the marketplace with more marketing about how the fact that we do marketing services for them just didn't feel like the right approach, especially in the face of being, again, dramatically outspent. So the strategy was, if we have a very small paid media budget, and I mean small, how can we have a strategy to cut out a portion of that paid media and direct it towards content? And this isn't a strategy that would be new to those of you in this room, but it was certainly new to a 100-year-old company that is used to, again, demand gen and direct response, really, really measurable stuff. And here I'm trying to sell them on, what if we go out and do something purposeful and meaningful, something that people want to spend time with? Then I feel like if we do that and we do that well, we can earn more impressions than we can possibly afford to buy with the budget that we have today. So that was the strategy. Let's cut off a portion of it and hope to earn more impressions than we could possibly buy. But just by having that strategy doesn't mean that that's going to be uh, a home run. It means you have to pick content that's going to make a difference and is going to resonate. And so next up, we had to figure out what was that content actually going to be. And we're probably all tired of hearing people use the word content to define so many things. They use it to define video, but it's also white papers. It's all these other stuff. And so we knew we needed to do something that people would want to spend time with, they'd want to share. And so how would we break through that clutter? So for me, whenever I started a new company, I always love going out and spending time with the customers. I think it's really important to understand what they go through on a daily basis, how they make their purchase decisions, what feels like work to them. And so as I'm out meeting with these small business owners, it would just amaze me how when you hear their stories, when you hear why they got into business or what their challenges are, you feel compelled to want to support them. You, know, you go to a retail shop and you want to do all your Christmas shopping there. Or you go to a great restaurant and you hear about how it's a second generation Italian restaurant and you want to tell all your friends and family to go and visit them. And so that's where the idea for the small business revolution came from. We felt like if we could go out and tell the stories of small businesses, that we could own something larger than a marketing campaign, bigger than a brand awareness push, we felt like we could start a movement. We felt like if we told these stories of small business owners, that we could compel more people to go out and support them. And in turn, we could own this space of just taking time to celebrate small business owners, celebrate the hard work, tell their stories, be advocates for them. Again, all our competitors are very busy competing on price and product. 
we're priced and product competitive too. But why can't we create something that people, again, want to spend time with? Why does it have to be something that interrupts what they want to be doing? Let's spend something that they want to share. And so the idea was that we'd go across the country and tell the stories of 100 small businesses. And we would do that through film and through photo essays. And we would bring these stories to life in order to, again, compel people to support them. And Deluxe could own the space of being the celebrators of small businesses. And so the strategy was, if we're trying to achieve more impressions and earn a lot of them through publicity and promotion and articles and uh, social, we felt like by having the strategy of telling 100 stories, that not only would we um, get some uh, media attention from the fact that we were doing something pretty notable and different and selfless in our centennial year, so we felt like we'd get national attention because of, of the campaign and how we were executing it and bringing it to life is very artistic. We also knew that we could activate local media in each of those 100 markets. So we knew that the local Dubuque Chronicle would want to do an article on the fact that their soap company right down the street was featured in this national um, uh, documentary series. We also knew that we could activate hyperlocal um, uh, attention as well. So in each of these businesses, they have social followings, they have communities that follow them and support them. And so we knew that we could really kind of blanket the nation, both through, again, national, local, and then hyperlocal. So again, we felt like that would, would contribute to our strategy of really kind of trying to create this movement and get it to catch on. And the one thing that led us the entire time with, uh, was authenticity. So you can say you're going to make videos, you can say you're going to go out there, but for us it was extremely important that this be incredibly authentic, it be very lightly branded, which was also very hard to sell, of course, and that the quality be very, very high. We wanted this to feel and to truly be a movement. And so authenticity was the one thing that led us the entire time. And I'll show you a couple of different clips throughout this presentation, but I want to show you one right now that's the trailer to give you a sense for kind of the, the quality of, of film. Small business is a revolution. You've got to put your all into your small business because it is you. It was all or nothing. I threw everything that I had into this barbershop, and it had to work. I was climbing the corporate ladder, but I had a dream of running a ranch. At my restaurants, people can come together. That makes me feel good about my job. This is the biggest thing I've ever done in my life. It's my legacy. See the original short film and photo series at smallbusinessrevolution.org. So again, it was really about bringing these stories to life. And again, you saw our logo on there, but it's at the very end. It's really about these small business owners. Again, we felt like we could really champion an actual movement rather than just making a campaign. So then we had to figure out how we kind of brought it to life. So one of the first decisions we had to make is where will this content live? And of course, we looked at Vimeo, we looked at YouTube, we looked at a variety of different options. Um, but at the end, we decided to um, create our own content platform. So it all lives on smallbusinessrevolution.org. And that decision was primarily driven by the fact that we really wanted the creative and the design of this to speak for itself. And that was the one experience where we could truly create that. And we could um, create um, the color palette and the design and the user experience the way we wanted to for this particular movement. Again, when you see the website, it's, it's beautiful, it's artistic. This is where we house the photo essays and the mini docs. Um, and uh, you know, it's, again, very, very lightly branded at the top. You see Small Business Revolution championed by Deluxe. Um, but our logo doesn't appear until you get to the bottom nav. It was really about it being movement first. Even the word championed by Deluxe, the word championed was very, very thoughtful decision because we wanted it to be, it's not sponsored by, it's not brought to you by, it's not Deluxe's small business revolution, it's a small business revolution first. Then we had to figure out, you know, how do we interact in social? So we know that we, the way we would tell stories on Twitter versus Facebook versus Instagram would be different, but we also knew that we had to create separate handles for this actual movement, for the small business revolution. So we couldn't have it going through the at Deluxe Corp handles because we're doing other things there. We have other sorts of content, you know, five best email marketing subject line headers or five best logo tips, things that are our content and are valuable to our customers but are different than stories. Telling. And so we needed to have our own place to roll out these stories, to engage, for it to almost have its own brand voice. One of the interesting things about when we were trying to decide on the platform and the social, et cetera, Lee mentioned before that we worked together on BMW. So when I was at Fallon, I had the honor of working on the BMW films, which really kind of created this category of branded content. 
And I remember I was tasked with having to find the video player that would allow us to play the videos. So we were creating these beautiful films shot by Hollywood directors. And our biggest fear was that people wouldn't even be able to watch them. People have to download a clunky player. Would they take the time to do that? Would they watch them? We weren't even talking about mobile. Mobile wasn't even, a, that wasn't even a thing. People didn't have smartphones. This was 12 years ago, so 13 years ago. So it's just funny how many options we have now today um, to be able to distribute and consume content. And it has just changed exponentially. So one of the other things is, is when we um, wanted to go out and shoot these films, for me it was extremely important that we find artists to bring this to life. So they couldn't be commercial directors or commercial photographers. We sought out to find uh, award-winning photojournalists who shoot for Nat Geo and, um, and documentarians that shoot documentaries that know how to bring stories to life through film. Not pretend to bring them to life, but actually do it through documentaries. And so we found this really great company out of Austin, Texas called Flow Nonfiction, and they did a great job of applying that artistic filter. It was very interesting as a brand to be working with a documentary company because they're not an agency, right? They, didn't, they don't have call reports or they didn't really understand how to maybe do reporting back, but that was okay. The, it was more important to find artists than to find an agency that had done something similar before. So the rollout was that we um, rolled out one mini doc each month and then um, seven to eight photo essays. And then in September, we launched the, the full length documentary. So it's a 25 minute uh, documentary that features experts like Robert um, Hershevac from Shark Tank and the small business administrators, um, administrators, so the woman who reports to Obama on all things small business, wanted to be a part of our film because again, it was so lightly branded, it was authentic, it was movement first. Um, Harvard business professor on economics, um, a variety of other experts in the small business space. So I'll show you just a, a short trailer of the full-length documentary. It's been really fun to get these experts and these influencers excited about what we're doing. So Robert Hershevec's a great example. Um, Shark Tank is a natural program kind of alignment, but he himself has become an advocate for the small business revolution and has joined me on a variety of different media tours because he just loves this movement and he loves that it's purpose-driven and that we're really trying to make a difference um, for small businesses. So I'll show you the trailer. 2008 was the eye of the hurricane. Large companies, 5,000 employees, 20,000 employees. We had one foot over the edge looking into the abyss. What's happened as a result of industrial capitalism is fewer and fewer companies are coming to dominate more and more of the economy. When you have a diminishing middle class with a few haves and many, many have-nots, you see tyranny. You see this social upheaval. In times of crisis, people go one of two ways. Either it becomes Lord of the Flies, or you rally around each other and support each other. Small businesses have the capacity to generate that kind of banding together. I do not think people really understand how big of an impact small businesses make on our nation's economy. They have always been the primary source of job creation in this country. And they're not hiring people abroad, they're hiring people in your neighborhood. I went into this business to create a culture where employees were treated well. It's almost a magnet effect. Here comes another small business and another small business. I'm really seeing Detroit come back and I wanted to be part of that movement. New Orleans, St. Louis, Detroit, small businesses are bringing cities back to life. And guess what? There was no bailout for the small business. We had to rescue ourselves. Everybody should think hard about how we're going to grow our country. The power in policymaking sits with big business, even though small contributes more to our economy. Building an economy based on our values is important. It allows you to know who built your furniture, how your clothes were made. This is not just about some kid with a lemonade stand. It's about setting standards for women, for people of diverse backgrounds, a livable wages. It's a revolution. Small business is a revolution. Every time you see a successful small business, someone made a courageous decision. It's what I believe in. These are my standards. I need my business to be something I'm proud of. Small business is not small. It's huge. Um, so, of course, we then layered on paid media. We had great partnerships with ABC, um, which allowed us to mirror that earned media strategy of having the national reach through um, Good Morning America and local through the local affiliates. So ABC was a great partner, great affiliations with Shark Tank. 
Um, and video became critical, right? So we had both photo essays and video. And so it's not surprising that in a number of um, the social platforms that we had better engagement, um, uh, more reach um, across both Facebook, um, Instagram, Twitter. We had more engagements, um, more interactions, and more uh, shares um, in all of those from a video perspective versus the photo essays. So the photo essays, again, were shot by photojournalists. They're beautiful. Um, we tell the stories. We do these profiles that accompany them. But people just love to interact with video. Um, and of course, this, this room knows that. Um, so I want to show you just one more sample. Um, so one thing that we really found was that uh, obviously channel and length matters. So the way we, again, rolled out the stories in Twitter was different than Facebook, and it's different than um, how we do it in Instagram. And we're still fine-tuning that, and we're still learning about which posts get the highest engagement and what people like to contribute to from a conversation perspective. Um, but the one thing we found that people love these little snackable videos, right? They love these 10-second, 15-second, 30-second pieces. And so there's this great one where we um, featured a woman who um, owns a bowling alley in Minneapolis, and uh, she had the Cohen brothers um, do their rap party after they shot Fargo um, uh, at, her, um, at her place. And when we were interviewing her about her diner, um, she had this great little sound bite for us, and it performed very well in social. We click play. They had the rap party for Fargo at the Bryant Lake Bowl, and we did let the Cone brothers go back and look at the pin setters. So anyways, the next movie they made was The Big Lebowski. I'm just saying. So that was just kind of a fun little example of how um, all these little pieces, I mean, this one was shared, this is one of our highest <laughs> ranked uh, pieces. So if we go on to the next, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about overall results. Um, so, you know, we have found that social media has been um, a, a great driver in the engagement and the adoption of this movement, which is not surprising um, to us at all. But even having completed the slides last week, all of these numbers are already um, out of date because it just keeps kind of exponentially starting over. We'll get, you know, it started out where we'd get 100 followers a day, and now it's 1,000. And so it's just, it's just um, continuing to kind of snowball, and we love the momentum. Facebook has obviously emerged as the, uh, the best story telling platform for this particular content series. Um, but we're excited to continue to reward these followers with more storytelling. And we have more continuations of the small business revolution. It's great that we've created this community um, in such a short amount of time. And so again, at the very beginning, I talked about the fact that the strategy was to not try and get incremental funding for content, but to actually repurpose paid media dollars into investing in these films. So if I look at that investment and the earned media that we've had and the articles that have been written and the impressions and the engagements, I would have had to have spent 11 times what I invested in the films to reach as many people. And we, these are really clean engagements. We wanted our impressions to be an, a really, really accurate number. And so we have reached 11 times more people by investing in this than we would have if we would have spent that same amount of money on paid media. And so that's something that I can go back to the board with and I can talk about the fact that we're reaching more people because we stopped and we did something that was purposeful and meaningful, and it's something that's making a difference in the small businesses that we're featuring. It's um, hopefully creating this movement of people recognizing the importance of supporting small businesses. Um, and it's a space that we can own. Um, so in just the last 10 months, we've had um, over 1.4 billion impressions um, and a little bit over 490 news stories written. So if I would have just gone out with a traditional PR campaign um, to try and get stories written about the fact that we were turning 100 and we're a new company now, and you probably know us as this, but we're now this, I could have maybe gotten 10 media stories written. Um, but because we did something that people wanted to spend time with from a national and a local perspective, we've had almost 500 stories written about it, and we still have a couple months of the documentary series left. So we're very excited about the work, and for me as a marketer, the most, the benefit or, or the greatest learning lesson is that when you actually do something that matters, right, Eric talked about brand acts, it's a real thing. You can actually choose to execute work and do an idea that actually does make a difference and not just something we tell our clients, but it can actually be purposeful and meaningful work. And I'm proud to be um, part of something that I really do consider um, to be the start of a movement uh, versus just another uh, brand awareness or marketing campaign. So thank you for your time.